the Healing Through Love podcast with Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. In episode 123, Christina Skillman shares the secrets to love, vulnerability and embracing true beauty. I just want to say like that's a red flag and I want because whoever you're going to spend the rest of your life with you should feel like you can be your whole self because if the end goal and the biggest desire for every human being on the planet is to be fully known and fully loved you can't be with someone who makes you want to put your guard up Mm, absolutely I love it it's so true so so finding that perfect partner is an inside job on every level from what you've yes. said, and we need to do the inside work. And when we have a higher level of self-worth, we're no longer even attractive to people that want to do us harm. When they don't even see us. We're annoying to them <laughs> on every level. That's right. So they leave us alone and we're no longer attractive. So it is all an inside job. That's and true. I love what you said about the red flags. We must be mindful of them. And this level of awareness is the beginning of the truth from what you've said. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of Healing Through Love. Each week, we share ideas, experiences, and resources to increase the awareness of domestic and family violence and to empower survivors to grow and thrive. We talk with experts who share their advice or with people who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. This is all about healing through love. And now, here are your hosts, Charlene Lynch and Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to the Healing Through Love podcast a space where stories of strength, resilience, and transformation unfold. I'm your host, Charlene Lynch, and I'm honoured to be your guide on this journey of empowerment and healing. Today, we have a very special episode tailored specifically to you, whether you're driving the car or sipping a cup of tea or simply taking a moment for yourself. I want you to know that you're in a safe place. Healing Through Love is more than a podcast. It's a community, a beacon of hope to remind you that you're not alone. In this episode, we have a guest who will share a story that resonates at the core of our mission, a story that illuminates the power of love, resilience, and unwavering strength that lies within each of us. So settle in, take a deep breath, and let the healing journey begin. But before we dive into the inspiring narrative today, just a quick reminder that if you find value in our episodes, consider supporting us by subscribing, sharing, and leaving a review. Your engagement helps us reach the hearts and spread the message of healing through love. I love it. Today, we've got a very special guest, and her name is Christina Skillman. Now, she's an entrepreneur, a business owner, and an author, and she's living in Boston, Massachusetts, so the other side of the world. So it's evening for her, and it's morning for us. Um, Her own personal journey of being fully unknown and fully loved began with a very solid and public commitment in 2016 that culminated in meeting her now husband in 2017 and she now works uh, with women to shorten the time gap between standing in their yes and finding their true total romantic love I love it as a woman who's just recently married in 2023 I left it till I was 57 to get married oh my gosh it was a long time between my hell yes and my oh my god my prince so I love it so Christina tell us a little bit more about your story so I would say I was a woman on a mission and I loved being an entrepreneur um, I ran my own business at a very successful video agency here in the Boston area. Um, and I really thrived off of production. I thrived off of success. And of course, as being a human being, you know, you want love. Uh, but I always kind of put that into someday or just kind of hoping it would come to me. Um, so I, I have to say, like, my life turned on a dime. It was actually the summer of 2014. And I met someone, I'm going to call him Tim, just for the sake, uh, not his real name. Uh, and this man 
just knew how to sweep me off my feet. I didn't know anything about narcissists. I didn't know anything about love bombing. I just fell for what he was selling hook, line and sinker. And he had the money and the toys to like get the job done. And I give him credit. He is very good at wooing women. And uh, I just, I just fell head over heels with this man. A year and a half later, a lots of like heartbreak and pain. Uh, obviously that relationship didn't work out. And I'm here to tell you right now, <laughs> As sad and awful as that ending was, it was without a doubt the best thing that ever could have happened to me. It's the best thing that I met him, and it was the best thing that we did not work out. So if you are living with heartbreak today, uh, I want to tell you what someone said to me. Your first love, in a lot of ways this man was my first love, is not your last love. There is still time. And until someone's putting nails in your coffin, it is not too late and you haven't missed it. And, and I just remember, um, I used to come home at night, you know, and you have the success or you have the victory and the win and you come home yet again to an empty apartment, right? You come home to the dishes in the sink that you have to clean or the laundry that you have to do because there's nobody there to help you do it. And sometimes the loneliness would just kind of crush me. And I would just almost sink to the floor in tears because it was just so overwhelming. And I look back now and what I realized what that was, was my female heart, my feminine essence was screaming for me to pay attention to it. And for the first time in my life, I couldn't silence her with busyness. I couldn't silence her with success or achievement. She was going to have me pay attention to her and I was going to have to focus on this area of my life because once I had tasted love and it was just a taste, it wasn't even the real thing, folks. I'm here to tell you that it was not the real thing. Um, I couldn't live without it and I didn't want to live without it again. And so I made a very real choice, a conscious choice that I was going to have love in my life and I was willing to do whatever work was necessary on myself to have it. And I went public with it. I mean, I was telling all my friends, anyone who would listen, I would tell. Um, and, you know, initially I started, I put myself online, I started dating, and I found myself, honest to God, dating the same pattern of men that I've been dating my whole life, you know. And that's when I started to realize, like, here I am, like, for the first time in my life, dating with great intention. And yet I'm still repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again. And that's when it dawned on me, like the problem is me. And so I really, that's when I started to do the intense inner work necessary. And I worked with coaches. Um, I think I worked with two different coaches over the next year and a half. And I embarked on this life changing journey and that culminated a year and a half later with me meeting my now husband. And I can tell you by the time I met Joe, my now husband, the kind of man I was looking for, the kind of person I was attracted to was entirely different than any man I'd ever dated before in my life. And I just want you to think about how huge that is. I literally changed who I was attracted to, who I was looking for. I had to do so much work on my brain and had to heal so many wounds from my childhood uh, to get myself to the place that I could truly receive and give love and, and receive that support and that companionship from a man, a man who made me feel safe, a man who made me feel wanted, like who called me good, who didn't come at me with like little knives to dig at me or cut me down. And that, I can't even tell you like how that took for me, it took me a year and a half to kind of put the pieces together and finally figure it out. And that's why I started this journey. And that's why I'm, I am writing a book about this, because I want to be able to tell women in a very short and concise way, some of the steps that I had to take and the many learnings and healings that I had to do to get myself from, you know, consistently falling for a certain type of man where it was never going to work out to finding the man of my dreams who looked very different than how I thought he would look. And I have never been happier.
Mm, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So coming back to uh, starting to do the work on you and, and having that association with the two different coaches, how important do you think or how pivotal do you think getting to your own values are for you getting um, on the same page for the love that you're meant to have? As far as what was the value of me working with coaches or your own personal values, values. like digging into your own personal values and understanding your, what's important to you. Well, there's a lot of great exercises that I had to do. And, but one of the things that I really had to come and realize was that I can have it, that I can have what I want and that there's more than enough out there. So if I am dating someone and he's not it, or he's not into me for whatever reason, it's okay because there's somebody else out there. Mm, so true. I and, love- it, and I really had to wrap my head around that. I had to wrap my head about what, what I had to offer was enough because I hid behind perfectionism for so long. And I really projected this image of myself that I thought everyone else wanted me to be. Hmm. And to be able to take down that and learn that vulnerability and to offer up the true Christina Skillman um, was scary. And what what hurt even more was like, if you met someone who didn't like it, (laughs) who didn't like the Christina Skillman, like that would really kind of set me back and like really hurt my feelings because the first time in my life I was dating, you know, barefaced, right? I was showing the world who I really was. And I never forget, I had a coach tell me once, she said, Christina, it is a man's right to not want to date you. And I remember just feeling like someone put cold water in my face. I was like, oh, you're right. It's okay, right? It is okay if he doesn't want to date me because there's somebody else out there who will. Um, So it was just a process of learning my values and changing my dialogue and healing, you know, the relationship with family and things that had happened um, and healing really the relationship with myself, my relationship with beauty um, and to let, to practice that receiving muscle because I was so used to doing everything for myself. I was very good at being independent. I was very good at being, you know, superwoman. Uh, But the truth of the matter is I really wanted help. I really wanted support. I really wanted a person next to me in the mess with me, Mm. not, not just friends. Like he's in the mess. Like this is our life. We're doing this together. We're, we're, you know, we're in the foxhole together. Um, and to, to be, to know that I can have that and that I'm worth that. And that somebody wants to do that for me was a really important part of my journey. All right. Oh, I love it. This is so juicy. So, so you've got this recovering perfectionist and, and you've also got the people pleaser. So do you think those <laughs> two are connected in some fashion? I do. You know, it's really interesting because I never would have thought of myself as a people pleaser because I'm also a truth teller. <laughs> <laughs> but it's only even been very recent in my journey that I've realized like I've been a caretaker of my family growing up. Like I've, I've taken on so much burden onto my shoulders because I'm good enough and I, you know, I, I can do it. So I should be able to do it. And so it's really been the work of my adult life beginning with this journey to see how much of that was really dysfunction. Mm. And that I'm not being asked by the universe to carry the load for everybody. I love it. I love it. So you've got all this internal work that needs to be done so that you are ready for that space of receiving. Um, But on the Mm -hmm. external level, uh, love to have a conversation about red flags and what things that people who are in the dating process. So many of the people that are listening to this podcast are either coming out of domestic violence or some of our some of our clientele are still in there. You know, they've obviously had patterns of behavior that they've repeated so um, the red flags, the things that they need to be mindful for when they're looking to date um, down the track. Uh, if you had a better understanding of that back in 2000, was it 14? Do you think that would have had a different outcome for you? So I, I want to say knowledge is power. So begin there. And I want to give any woman who's coming out of an abusive background The first thing I want to bless you with is time. I want to give you time uh, to heal. And I want to give you time 
to understand those old patterns and what role you may, might have played in participating with them in some way. Mm. Because if we can't understand that and, and do the forgiveness of yourself and the other people and do all that healing that we need to do, you're just going to keep repeating those same patterns over and over again. We've got to take what's currently in the darkness and bring it into the light. And that takes time. I know when you really want something and I want to bless that desire to really want love in your life, you're going to have it. It is your destiny to have it. But please understand it is a process and that process is good and it's going to change the rest of your life. So the first red flag has to do more with us. Like, please don't feel that panic. You have time. There is no clock, Matt, that's going to run out and then you're going to lose the love of your life. He's coming. Uh, but whole, healthy people attract whole, healthy people. So let's get ourselves whole, healthy, and happy so that we can attract a like-minded person. Hmm. Um, so uh, a major red flag for me, you know, speaking of that initial, react, that initial relationship was love bombing. And I didn't even know what it was. Uh, I, you know, it's funny, though, because I remember I had a dream when we were first dating that uh, my ex-boyfriend was coming in a, a big black tank to take over my life. Because I could feel even that early stage that it wasn't about me. He made it sound like it was all about me. But at the end of the day, it was all about him. It was all about what he wanted and when he wanted it. Mm. Uh, he knew. So that is a huge red flag. He, he knew how to manipulate you and we need to be aware of when we're being manipulated. You know, one of the things that my, my husband did when he, we first started dating, he's, he always made me feel like I was right, that I was good. So another red flag for me would be if someone's coming at you with a critical spirit, like little quips, little things to kind of keep you off balance and off guard. Um, I just want to say like, that's a red flag. And I want you, because you, whoever you're going to spend the rest of your life with, you should feel like you can be your whole self. Because if the end goal and the biggest desire for every human being on the planet is to be fully known and fully loved, you can't be with someone who makes you want to put your guard up. Mm, absolutely. I love it. It's so true. So, so finding that perfect partner is an inside job on every level from what you've yes. said, and we need to do the inside work. And when we have a higher level of self-worth, we're no longer even attractive to people that want to do us harm. When they don't even see us. We're annoying to them <laughs> on every level. That's right. So they leave us alone and we're no longer attractive. So it is all an inside job. That's and true. I love what you said about the red flags. We must be mindful of them. And this level of awareness is the beginning of the truth from what you've said. Yes. That having that level of awareness, not just for our own self, but what's exteriorly happening, then we can we can respond differently and we're attractive to different people. I love it. Now, today you are only three months from the launch of your book. Is that right? Yes. That's exciting. That's exciting. Thank so you. Uh, we can expect to see great things. And I'm looking forward to being able to promote that in our community as well, the launch of the book. It's exciting. And, um, and so currently you've got a special offer for our listeners today. Is that right? Yes, I'd love to offer anyone who's listening a quick what I call a 30-minute love tune-up. So if this is something, if any part of my message resonated with you, if this is something that you have felt is weighing on you, um, you know, if, if you're feeling that loneliness, if you're feeling that readiness to want to stand in your yes and, and go get it, but you just don't know where to start, or maybe you feel like you keep attracting the same men or no men at all, believe it or not, that's it. both things are actually a pattern. And so I just want to invite you into that conversation, invite you into that awareness that, you know, sometimes we all need help. I, you know, having an outside perspective can be really huge because uh, our subconscious mind doesn't always know. We, it, it, it's looking for the same thing, right? Uh, and we have to, like, again, call what's in the, currently operating in darkness into the light. And so if, if I can have a conversation with you and maybe point you in the right direction, I'll offer you a little bit of truth or tell you more of my story. If for no other reason than to give you the confidence and the faith to believe that you can have it um, and that it's out there for you, then I'd love to do that. Mm, I love it. It is so true that it's about time. My, my, my husband that I've just recently married, we dated when I was 21. So that's 
30, oh gosh, I'll, more than 30 years ago. So I'm 57 now, actually 58 as of last week. So there was oh, a congratulations. Big gap. Thank you. There was a big gap uh, in, yeah. uh, in in that. And we wouldn't have lasted if we'd stayed in a relationship I when I was in my it's 20s because I was just a firebomb. And it took 30 years <laughs> for me just to settle down, pedal, and uh, and become the person that I am today. But, you know, uh, you know, the interesting thing is that he never stopped loving me. For that entire 30 years, I was still the one that got away. And after wow. had a few too many beers, it would be tears for me that would be crying into the beers. And uh, I just <laughs> I love the story. I love the story. And um, and when we're together, we drive everybody insane because we're just in a love bubble and we have been and yeah. we probably won't drop out of it because it's on every level we're destined to be together. But I had to do the inside yes. work. I had mm-hmm. to do the inside work to get me in a place where I was able to be loved the way that he loves me yes. because the love that he had for me was too much for me when I was in my 20s. Mm-hmm. And um, and I, yeah, I went off and uh, got myself into a whole lot of trouble in my 20s, 30s and yeah. my 40s. And that's okay. I'm better now. But I love it. I love it. I'm excited that your book is coming out and we've only got three more months to wait. I'm excited that you're so generous and offering this one-on-one, this love tune-up for 30 minutes. It's a very, very generous offer to have um, have that time with you so that you can dive in deep to see where the person is and, and what might help them move forward. And I love the fact that you're doing one-on-one coaching because, you know, relationships, it is it's a personal thing. And uh, to run, be running a group program for this, it's not as intimate and relationship is intimate and it's about trust and you get that trust when you're working one-on-one with somebody. So I'm excited that you work one-on-one and I'm even more excited with the fact that your entire business is based on referrals. So that just goes to show the caliber of the work that you do and how you serve people. And they're so happy to refer you um, to, to their friends that need your services. I love it. So in closing today, but- what, uh, what, um, what words of wisdom would you share with our audience? Well, I want to say how you do one thing is how you do everything. And so you think this is just about finding a husband. No, this is about so much more than that. You'd be surprised about how when we heal our relationship with ourselves, how we heal a relationship with our beauty, if we heal a relationship with our self-worth, um, how we attract more money to us, more success to us. It just gets our vibrational energy operating at such a high level that you'd be surprised by how much more capacity that you have. And if you're out there and you're feeling exhausted and you're feeling burned out, I just want to invite you into that moment of rest to know that you can start to exercise your feminine spirit and this powerful energy to start attracting those things that you want into your life, beautiful things that you can co-create um, that it's possible for you, that you're worth it, um, and you can do it. Oh, I love that. You're speaking my language. I speak frequency, and it's all frequency, and high frequency is magnetic, and it attracts attracts all sorts of delicious things. I love this. I love this. So um, the links for to contact for the Love Tune-Up are going to be in the show notes and also in the show description, and also how to contact Christina as well. It's been a privilege and a pleasure to have this conversation with you today. Now, if you're listening and you're a survivor, we have got Pamper Days, so think days spa on steroids coming up in your neighborhood as of 2023's healing through love has gone global so we are now running these beautiful pamper days globally around the world reach out to us and we'll point you in the direction of one that's happening near you if you're a practitioner and you can make a difference for people who are recovering and shifting through that very challenging time of family and domestic violence, we would love to connect with you so that you can see if you might want to participate in one of our Healing Through Love Pamper Days on a global scale. Please reach out to us with Healing Through Love. Our details are obviously in the show notes and in the show description. It's been a privilege and a pleasure to spend this quality time with you, Christina. It's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from Christina. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Healing Through Love. You can get further resources, see the show notes, or simply reach out to us via our website at htlaustralia.org.
Thanks so much for joining us and we look forward to your company next time on the Healing Through Love podcast.